Hello, Dying to DIY fam. Thank you guys so much for returning, coming back to spend a little bit of your time with me today. I love and appreciate that so much. And for those of you that are new, hi, my name is Camaro, and I'm so happy that you stumbled upon my channel. Hopefully, you will like what you see enough to be able to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I would love for you guys to stick around. All right, guys, so for today's video, I have six really pretty and classy fall DIYs to share with you all. So let's waste no more time and get right into it. For my first project, I am going to be using this placemat from Dollar Tree. It says, gather here with grateful hearts. I really loved the sage green like buffalo check that it's got in the background so I could not wait to use this so I'm just starting by taking a straight edge and my razor blade and I'm going to cut off some of the excess parts of that um, the buffalo check pattern so I just cut off two rows on each of the sides and I would definitely put those pieces aside and like save them for a future DIY because I think you could totally use them again for sure um, so after that I'm taking some five gallon stir sticks these are from Walmart and they're like $1.98 for a three pack so I feel like that's super reasonable and I only need two of the stir sticks for this project so I'm taking my first paint stick and um, I'm just going to line it up to one of the edges on the placemat and then make a little pencil mark on the other end so I know where to make my cuts and I did the same thing to the second stick and then I took both of those sticks to my garage and I just cut them with my electric saw but as you can see the cuts kind of came out a little bit wonky or it's like kind of you know um what is the word I don't know chiseled splintery either way <laughs> um, I'm just gonna take a little bit of sandpaper I'm gonna use my finger sander and just kind of sand down those edges and make them nice and smooth because we don't want to cut ourselves and we don't want splinters really I don't want to deal with that <laughs> and I don't think you do either so definitely sand those down and after I was done sanding I moved on to the staining process and I used pickled oak and a dark walnut stain I'm kind of mixing these together the like the image that I had in mind for this project the dark walnut was just way too dark for the wood so I wanted to lighten it up a little bit and give it more of a like natural wood color you know just on the more neutral side so that's why I'm using that pickled oak so I'm just going to give the um stir sticks like a really good coat of that pickled oak and then I'm just going to go in a kind of lightly well I tried lightly ish <laughs> with the dark walnut so yeah I just dipped it in once and then I'm going to use whatever is just on my paintbrush and you just really want to mix those two colors together and then once you have that kind of you know color combo mixed and whatnot you're going to take some cheesecloth and just wipe off the excess stain and it's going to come out a lot lighter and neutral looking and here are both of the sticks after I was done staining them and then you know wiping the excess off I just really love this like color combo together and I use it quite a bit actually and it's just one of my favorites for sure um really fast I just wanted to show you the difference between that dark walnut and then like the color that I made and mixed whatnot you can see how just how dark <laughs> that dark walnut really is and that was not the look I was going for so that's why I kind of stayed away from that Okay, so once I was done staining, it was time to attach the sticks to the placemat, and I did that with some E6000 and some hot glue. That is just like a very basic, you know, DIY 101 glue combo. <laughs> E6000 and hot glue for sure. The hot glue is like a quick kind of fix, and then the E6000 is like a really long-lasting glue hold, so you definitely want to use them like in you know contrast to one another and especially me being in Arizona like my hot glue does not hold up in the this Arizona heat I'm not gonna lie like I'll keep it stored in my garage and I go back to the next season it's like completely falling apart so I definitely have to have some extra support when it comes to that or like things like even during fall right now I'm gonna hang some stuff on my front door and still the sun is gonna melt it so I definitely need the E6000 and the hot glue combo. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, I'm just gluing each stick, one at the top and one at the bottom, and just making sure that like a little bit of the stir stick is hanging off of the placemat and then a little bit is hanging off on the bottom. So that way you just don't cover up that really pretty wreath that's on the background. And then after that, I took some twine and some of these larger white beads, and I just decided to make like a hanging... Um, 
like a little hanger at the top, you know, using my wooden beads. I played around with like some black beads and then more of just like the neutral or uh, natural colored beads that like, you know, you get on Amazon or whatnot. But I ultimately decided that the white looked so much better. I did like the black, but like I felt like it was it needed something else if I was going to have the black hanger on it so just stick with the white um, in my opinion I think it really just brings all the colors together so I just kept stringing until I was happy with like the length of the hanger and I ended up with um, 12 total beads so once I was happy with that size I'm just going to go ahead and use some hot glue and glue this hanger down into place and that was all there was to this project here is how it turned out i absolutely love it i think it's so so cute in my opinion um like i said before i love that sage green color and then just a little wreath around there so cute and then the wood sticks love it and with the white hanger pops love it so so very much so let me know what you guys think of it down below in my comment section and let's get to the second project all right, for this project, I'm using this little hanging sign from Dollar Tree. And I'm just starting by using my little finger sander to sand off the glitter that's on the words. For this first one, I kind of really went like, I went ham with the sanding process because <laughs> like I was kind of going in a different direction in the beginning with this. So I was like really, really trying to get it nice and smooth and then once I was sanding like some of the edges were coming off so I was like oh that's cool like I can totally do something with that but in the end so you can see that first one like is completely gone disappeared but the other ones no just a very light sanding process you just want to get rid of the glitter and have a nice smooth background so you can um, start your crafting process on there <laughs> so once the sanding was done I am taking some Mod Podge and a brown cardstock and I'm just gonna add a really good layer of the Mod Podge paint it on and, and then I just laid that sign right on top of the cardstock just so I knew you know like where I needed to place it um, and then I flipped it over and then I'm using my little braying tool to kind of smooth out all the bubbles and the ripples and just making sure everything is nice and adhered together you want to make sure you give it like adequate time to dry and whatnot so I decided to use my blow dryer to speed things up I unfortunately don't have like a heat gun or anything like that um or, like a heat dryer type of thing you know for crafts and I totally am going to look into getting one because I need to stop using my blow dryer <laughs> um okay so after that once it was dry then I'm just going to take my cutting mat and a la la la, and an exacto knife <laughs> And then I'm just going to cut along the outer edges of that sign. The top and the bottom, obviously, is so easy. It's just one straight line, but the sides are like a little winky wonky. Like, so you definitely just got to do your best. You just got to go with the flow and, you know, think it turns and you turn and it's fine. So whatever you cut off is going to be perfectly fine because after that, you're just going to use that finger sander again or a little piece of sandpaper and just kind of sand off those edges so that it really gets everything out of the grooves and the ripples and whatnot okay so here is the first one after i was done with those steps and then of course just did the same thing to the next two and you can kind of see that like little spot of mod podge that dried on the first one so kind of like ruined all my dreams of just leaving the cardstock as is so i decided <laughs> to paint each of the layers with or each of the little signs with a good layer of the mod podge because that little spot that dried on the first one was like definitely gonna drive me nuts even though i do end up covering it here in a second i didn't know i was gonna cover it um at this point so <laughs> so that's why i took kind of like some like unnecessary steps that i didn't really need to take so if you guys are making this you probably don't need to cover it with the mod podge you can just kind of skip this step i just had to do it because i had that like weird dried spot on the first one and like i said it was totally gonna drive me nuts so we had to get rid of that <laughs> And here they are after, you know, all three had time to dry with the layer of Mod Podge. Nice and shiny. I don't know. These kind of look like, they look like delicious. Like they look like a slice of like peanut butter or something. Like I could totally eat it. Anyways, um, so random, sorry. But next I am taking these really cute napkins from Dollar General. Like I loved the design on the front, the pumpkins with the floral, like the sunflowers on top. 
yes chef's kiss love them so much so someone in my last video when i did like the napkin diy told me that like i should take all the layers apart because usually i would just leave that layer that i just peeled away from the top layer and mod podge it so i was like okay i'm gonna try it this time so peeled off you know all that second layer or whatnot and then i'm just lining the napkin up onto each of my little signs and then i'm just gonna mod podge everything down into place and make sure that i'm smoothing out the bubbles and the ripples i think i say that so much but like you just want to make sure it's just a nice smooth surface that's all i'm getting at <laughs> so smooth out all those bubbles and have a nice smooth surface so i definitely feel like removing each of those layers is so much better it allows you to like the i don't like the material is more malleable like you can maneuver it easier so i think it helped me in the long run for sure so i will definitely be taking apart every single layer from here on out <laughs> so after that i'm just giving it a little bit of time to dry i didn't let it dry fully i mean you definitely can i think it's okay if you just let it dry i don't know let it dry a little bit and then i just am ripping apart the um ripping off the excess napkin away from the sign and then again using that finger sander to just sand off the like extra material that doesn't come apart and then obviously to get in those like that little wavy part on the side so make sure that part is nice and smooth as well once I had all of that sanded, I am taking some more Mod Podge and then now I'm sealing this napkin so that way it's going to have like a nice hard surface. And I chose a Mod Podge that has a, a, um, a glossy finish rather than a matte finish. So you can totally decide whatever, you know, kind of finish you want, a satin, a matte, a glossy finish. This is just the one I chose. And here is what it was looking like after I let the Mod Podge on this layer dry. And I think it is so cute. So of course I did the rest of them. I just did them off camera for you because it's the same process. But it's totally got this like cute, like, hippie boho vibe going on and i absolutely love it so once i was done with the signs um i'm taking that ribbon off one it's kind of just not giving the vibes that i'm going for and two i kind of ruined it when i was adding so much mod podge <laughs> it had like dark dried thicker spots and then it was like the regular consistency of the ribbon so yeah and that was a no from me so i decided to use my raw wooden beads from amazon and some clear fishing wire so i'm just going to be doing the same type of layout as the original ribbon so it's going to start at the bottom of one side work its way up to the middle sign up to the third and loop at the top and then come down that other side all the way to the bottom so i'm just doing one continuous line of beads but there will be some gaps like where the beads don't need to be obviously like on the back of each sign it's just going to be the string and some hot glue and then once i get into the middle sections where like the signs are going to hang from one another that's where the beads will be but the line is continuous it's not going to be i'm not going to do like a string of beads glue it and then do another little string of beads glue it no i just want a long continuous line going from the bottom wrapped around to the top all the way to the other side on the bottom <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> this is just going to make it so much easier and make it take like less time rather than having to make each little portion individually in my opinion so you attach it however you feel like but this is just my method and how i attached all the pieces back together all right and here is how it looked after i was done with all of those steps and seriously loving it like you could totally leave it just as is and call it a day and be done because i think it's so stinking cute like this those beads like really just made it come to life <laughs> so one more little step and then i will be finished so i am taking these little wooden signs these are from dollar tree they say hello fall blessed give thanks um welcome autumn um welcome home maybe no welcome something like that these are just the three that i picked out to kind of play around with because in the beginning i was going to glue one word onto each of the signs and i was trying to maneuver them because i still wanted to be able to see the background i wanted to see the pumpkins and the flowers and whatnot so if i had one on each little sign and i put it directly in the middle you only see the same parts so i was like okay maybe i glue one at the top and then the next one in the middle and then the next one at the bottom of the sign so 
I was just playing around with a bunch of things but in the end I decided to use one that says hello fall and I glued that right into the middle of the sign and then I just left the other two blank and yeah here is how it turned out oh my goodness you guys how stinking cute is this like I literally just love it so freaking much <laughs> it has like such hippie boho fall vibes like and i love it everything came together so well and i am could not be more pleased with how it turned out love 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 the beaded strand that pumpkin napkin is everything too so definitely let me know what you guys think about it down below in my comment section and let's get to the next project all right, for this one, I will be using this styrofoam pumpkin from Dollar Tree. And I thought I had a white one on hand, but apparently I don't. So I'm going to paint this one white here in a second. So if you do have a white one, I would start off with the white one. Or, of course, you can paint it any other color that you, you know, you please. Um, so I just started off by cutting this pumpkin in half, but I am making sure that the bottom portion is bigger than the top portion. So you're going to cut it a not directly in half you're going to cut it about you know three fourths away from the bottom and like one fourth you know is left on the top oh my gosh so funny it sounds like i'm trying to teach a math lesson or something i don't know cut it in half if you would like to or <laughs> kind of leave a little bit more at the bottom like i did it's it's up to you either way is fine so like i said i needed to paint this pumpkin white because i thought i had a white one on hand but i did not so i am just taking some of my white chalk paint and giving this pumpkin two really good coats of that paint just covering everything completely i even did the stem white as well and after that i decided that i wanted to seal it with some mod podge so that way the paint kind of doesn't come up and you don't start to see the orange again and then it's also going to help with the parts where you cut that pumpkin in half because it kind of causes the styrofoam to loosen up and then it like falls everywhere and it continues to just um, break apart so you want to seal those edges where you did cut the pumpkin in half also so that way it keeps that styrofoam nice and contained and here it is after I sealed it it's nice and shiny and it's got like a thick hard coat on the outer edge love that next I'm taking just a small piece of like floral foam and here I am wishful thinking and thinking that this hot glue was going to adhere the foam to the pumpkin <laughs> because if you know you already know that it did not um it kind of just melted and disintegrated and didn't stay in place at all so anyways I glued that down into the base of the pumpkin and then i'm going to glue the stem also back into place i am just cutting off the excess part of that toothpick but also watch your thumbs please don't be losing any thumbs like i almost did almost cut my thumb no i didn't cut it off but i almost pinched it really really bad <laughs> Like, thankfully, I moved my thumb before I clamped that baby down. <laughs> that would have sucked so bad. Anyways, yes, here's me checking on that floral foam. Nope, definitely was not glued down. So, oh, you know, just might as well try again for kicks and giggles. Um, but no, still didn't work. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing at myself because I really thought it was going to glue itself down and it didn't. So, anyways, taking some toothpicks and I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to kind of put those toothpicks in at an angle like a little TP so that way it keeps that floral foam nice and secure and it's just going to stay down there at the bottom um, and just be yes again nice and secure. Um, I did use a little hammer to kind of get those toothpicks all the way into the foam so uh, that way I did not risk like poking myself or it getting caught on like any fabric or anything when you're like you know decorating your house with this and then I did fill in those holes with a little bit of hot glue so that way those toothpicks will not come back out um, through the way that they came in <laughs> and after that going through my floral pieces um, picks I got pine cones and stuff here my daughter is tricking me actually I left this in here because I put the flowers down obviously didn't see the spider she came in put the spider in there and yeah it scared me half to death because I was like, um, I did not see this when I put these on the table. So she's a little prankster, that's for sure. But we're always pranking each other. So she definitely gets it from me. Mama's mini. So yes, flowers. Um, you can go with whatever color scheme that your heart is desiring. I lately for fall, I've been feeling like orange and blue tones. And I just really love the way that those have been coming together for me. So 
by all means keep it very neutral if you want to stick with like all the blush colors or you want to do like reds and oranges and blues and yellows like you want to go full on out whatever color that you choose i think it's going to be beautiful you just want to really focus your um, floral pieces like on the front of one half so pick a half and focus on that side only and you're going to kind of build it up from there just on the front part and then you're going to wrap it around also so once you feel like you have enough floral pieces in there you're going to take your top and then that's when you're going to attach the top to the base like the bottom of the pumpkin and in order to do that you're going to need a few more toothpicks so you're just going to prop it up um you know at the back you're going to line the pumpkin up completely and then you're going to prop it on top of your floral pieces that you decided to work with and then you're going to stick your little toothpicks just straight down so that way it's going to go from the top into the bottom portion of that pumpkin and then again i did use my hammer to make sure that the toothpicks are all the way into the pumpkin and there's not any portion like sticking out so that way you don't poke yourself so once you have the top portion attached to the bottom portion you might have a little gap like i did where you didn't wrap your flowers around far enough and that's probably super self-explanatory but yes you're just going to take your flowers and just kind of fill in those holes and any gaps that you see you just don't want to be able to see inside of the pumpkin you just want to make it look like this pumpkin is kind of bursting open with floral pieces and that was it for this one here is how this one turned out and how lovely is this it's just so like beautiful and elegant i don't know i absolutely love this one it kind of looks like a little clamshell or something that like is popping open or like maybe like a macaroon macaron how do you say it? i don't know potato potato um but like a little macaroon you know um exploding with floral pieces but yet it is a pumpkin because we are decorating for fall so i totally love this and i mean if you can find like a bigger pumpkin to do this with i think it would be absolutely stunning to like put on your front door your front porch area mm, so so cute so let me know if you guys are going to make this one down below and on to the next one we go so for the next two projects i will be using two of these little leaves that are from hobby lobby and i'm just going to start by removing the little hanger that's at the top and i'm going to put that aside because i'm going to use that later on next i am taking this like faux leather sheet this is like a darker cognac color maybe more on the brown ish side um and i ordered these from amazon so i will link that in my amazon store and that can be found in my description box down below if you're interested um you yeah, can totally check that out anyways sorry sidetracked um so yes i'm taking this faux leather sheet i'm just measuring it to the leaf you know so i'm just kind of deciding where I need to cut it and whatnot and then I took it to my cutting mat and I'm just making those cuts in the beginning I was just thinking about gluing the material you know dead center or not dead center I knew I wanted it towards the bottom more but I just wanted it to be straight across but I was kind of playing around with the leaves and it's like standing them up and whatnot and once I figured out that they could kind of stand on their own that's the direction that I went with when I was um, deciding where to glue the material. So now once they stand up, they kind of lean to one side. So I just wanted to stand them up, lean them, you know, how they were going to fall or whatever, or stand <laughs> in this case. And then that's where I was going to be placing my material. So it's kind of glued onto the leaf like diagonally, but once it stands up, the material is straight across. Once I had the material glued down, I am taking these little table accents from the Target Dollar Spot. And they say like, be thankful, fall is my favorite, um, hello fall, and you know, things along the sort. I decided to use the fall is my favorite and then also the hello fall one, which you'll see here in a second. Um, so I'm just taking that little table decor and putting it, you know, gluing it right into the center of that faux leather. So here is what it's looking like after those steps. And then after that, I am taking some gold push pins and I'm just gonna push one at each of the corners onto the leather part. Um, and when I was doing this, I kind of envisioned it a little bit different. So that's why I made the second one here in a second that you'll see. It's basically the same exact thing. It, the only thing different is that the leather piece is a little bit thicker and then the push pins are able to fit inside of the leather so this part like on this one the um 
leather is a little bit thinner and smaller so the push pins kind of stick outside of the leather which in the beginning I wasn't really liking that I didn't really care for it and actually I end up liking this one better than the other one so it's just funny how it works out that way but after I was done with the push pins I just took that little hanger that I took off earlier and I just made a really simple quick and easy bow to go at the top and here it is this is the finished look I think it is so cute though oh my goodness i love it i love the neutral vibes but it's still got like a boho type of feel to it and i just love the gold and the brown and like the neutral colors and how they all just come together so well so here like i said before here's the second one ultimately same thing same exact thing but you can see how that the leather is just a little bit thicker and then the push pins stay inside of that leather but like i said i kind of don't like that one as much as I like the other one with the, the skinnier leather piece so I don't know I still obviously they're both super super freaking cute um in my opinion I love them both but yeah I think if I had to do another one I would probably make it the skinnier leather because I feel like the white the saying kind of fills out that leather more and it just gives it a better contrast rather than having so much leather and not enough like word in the middle <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I know I'm rambling so much in this video. I'm so sorry. But anyways, I love the way that these turned out and on to our last and final project for this video. So I will be using these little wooden cubes from Dollar Tree. I needed two packs because I needed a total of four and one pack only has three. So you're going to need two packs and you're going to take one from the second pack. And then I started off by staining these. I did try to do the pickled oak and then the dark walnut stain combo but it didn't really work out that well i don't know if it's just like kind of the um the type of wood or the block or like the cut because you can see some of the spots on the cubes like are much darker than the other sides so that cut it's like a little bit softer that wood is way softer the other wood that's like a little bit harder and it's like more slick it kind of stains better than those other weird like soft spots so anyways i gave up with the pickled oak and i just kept with the dark walnut and i still think they are super super cute so after that i'm just kind of taking a little straight edge type of thing and i'm just going to find the center of each of the blocks i actually only do a one of the blocks and i will show you here how i get kind of the same centers on all of them so I'm gonna do this first one and I'm just doing them cutting them in each half going around it so that way I can kind of kind of find a common center <laughs> so you're gonna make your lines and then where those lines like all cross with one another that's like your common center which it couldn't even it's probably not even fully centered but for the time being what you measured that is a common center <laughs> so you're just gonna go with that we're just gonna wing it right i'm just gonna wing it through life i know so i found my common center and then i'm just taking some um dark brown paint and i'm gonna put a good little dot in the center and then i'm gonna line up the other blocks on top of the one where i found like that common center so that way they're all the holes are all going to be based off that one block so they all should be pretty in the same exact spot if you feel me you know what i mean okay so after we do the center thing we are taking a drill and i'm just going to drill a pretty good size hole through the middles of each of those blocks it, it's not super small it's not really big it's just big enough to kind of fit some jute twine you know right through there and that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to use some jute twine and then my large white beads so i'm just going to start by stringing on one of the beads and you're going to keep this strand of jute twine like continuous again like i kind of did with the last diy in this video the strand is just going to be continuous so i do a white bead then i do a wooden block then i do a white bead then i do a wooden block white bead wooden block okay you get the picture so i'm going to keep doing that until i make it to the very very end you're going to be ending with one of those white beads or a bead of whatever color that you choose so uh, once I was done stringing on the beads and the blocks, I'm pulling more of that jute twine through. I want a really good amount on both sides. So basically kind of like an even amount on each side because now I'm going to make a tassel for each of the ends of this little kind of um, tiered tray decor that I've got going on. So I'm using this like plain wooden plank uh, from Dollar Tree. You can use cardboard or your hand even if you want to. Just whatever, you're just gonna wrap 
you're going to use it to um, wrap your jute twine around. I think I did it about 15 times. I just want it nice and thick, you know, not too thin, you know, just um, till it's kind of, you know, pleasing to your eye. And then I'm going to shimmy it off of that board, off of that plank. And now I'm going to start making the head, neck, and like body of this tassel. So hopefully you've made a tassel before, so you kind of know what I'm talking about. And then it makes this whole like little this part easier for you I guess because I'm going to try to explain it the best way I can but so I'm still I want everything to be connected for me personally but you guys can totally do the tassels separately and then just glue them on if you wanted to I was just trying to keep everything nice and connective and just one continuous strand <laughs> I don't know what it is with me with one being one continuous strand and not cutting things apart but this is just how I did it. So I'm using an excess part of the strand, like the um, the jute that I just wrapped around the plank. I'm using the end of that to tie around the top of the tassel and then around to make the neck of that tassel. And that way I'm just going to cut off any excess part, but that way it's already attached to this, you know, this jute strand. So once I cut that off, I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue just to make sure everything is going to be you know, nice, nice and secure, <laughs> noise, noise and secure and uh, stay in place. <laughs> and then after that, I'm just going to cut the tails of the tassel apart, you know, cut, make the loops, or I mean, turn the loops into little strands. And then you're just going to go ahead and of course, give it a little haircut. So that way the bottoms are nice and even um, to one another. And here is what I had after I made the first tassel. So so cute already everything is coming together so nicely and in my opinion like i would probably make another one of these and just have it just like that where it kind of is um you can hang it vertically rather than it being horizontally like made to be um because this one i am making it to be horizontally like laid out instead of vertically so you can totally do a vertical one and i think it's gonna look so stunning anyways okay so i'm doing the next tassel the second tassel basically the same exact thing this time though i did tie a knot at the end of that little garland strand so that way your your little beads and your cubes your blocks are going to stay in place in case your jute twine ends up kind of like stretching out while you're making the tassel like your, your tassel process you know so just tie a little knot there so that way those beads can stay nice and taut and next to one another but you're just basically doing the same exact process like you did for the other tassel um this tassel for me turned out so much better because it was like my second time doing it um the first one kind of came out a little bit wonky but it's okay you live and you learn and that is the best part about DIYing you can grow as you go <laughs> um, so yeah the same thing making the tassel you know you got your head your neck and then the body of the tassel so here it is once I was done with that second tassel and I am loving it I think it is so cute already and now we are in the home stretch this is almost done so I'm taking these felt letters from Dollar Tree and I picked out the letters to spell fall and I did this on two sides. So two sides have fall on them and then I just needed a word for the next two sides. And I decided, you know, fall and Halloween, they're like back to back with this, you know, right next to each other. So I decided to put the word boo on to the other two sides and in the beginning i was so excited and i was like oh my god i love this it's a great idea but then <laughs> i didn't really think it through because i had one word on like a, a different wor word oh my gosh hmm, brain compute i had a different word on each of the different sides so i had fall i had boo i had home and i had noel and i was like okay perfect like i got all my bases covered I got fall, I got Halloween, I got Christmas, and then I got like everyday decor. And I was like so excited. But then, you know, if you're using this as like a tabletop decor, when you're looking at one side, so say you're looking at the front side, you can still see what's on the top. So if the top and the front don't match, like if they don't say the same thing, it kind of just looks weird. Like I had fall and then it was like, oh, Noel. And it's like, okay, well, that doesn't really go. So <laughs> I had to take that off. And so I just stuck with two different words and you're going to put... Um, you know, one of the words on two sides and then the other word on the other two sides. So now, whichever way you look at it, you'll only be seeing 
the the two words that like are necessary for like you know that season or whatnot because you could totally remake this for like christmas or just everyday home decor you can have it say home and cozy or something and then like noel and um I don't know, another Christmas four-letter word like type of thing, you know what I mean? Anyways, here is how this one turned out, you guys, and oh my goodness, I am obsessed. I love it. I think it is so freaking cute. Love the dark stain, you know, with it and the, the white beads and the white letters and then the natural looking like jute twine. Oh, I can't get enough. I love that it also says, you know, fall and boo, because you can totally use this for Halloween decor or your fall decor. And like I said, you can totally remake this for Christmas even. Maybe do red and green for the colors, or if you like white and red, you know what I mean? Or keep it stained. I love it. Anyways, let me know what you guys think all about it. Wait, no, that's not right. Let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know all about you guys, I've been doing this voiceover for too long. It's time for me to hit the road, Jack. <laughs> Anyways, tell me how you feel about it down below in my comment section. And, you know, in the meantime, I am going to go be working on some Halloween DIY videos to share with you guys. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see y'all next time.